If you look at recent polls, it's astonishing how many young people, uh, millennials, people 35 years and under in the United States actually uh, are sympathetic to socialism. In fact, one poll from 2016, one in six millennials says that they like the idea of socialism, and I think it's one in, uh, or one in three uh, actually identify with it in some ways. And this is a very strange thing. Part of it, I think, is that people don't know what socialism means. It sounds like a nice thing. It has that word social in it. We want to be social. We're social creatures. And so if you want a, a political economy or a system, you want one that actually notices that we're social. So as long as you're just sort of imagining uh, this nice idea in your head, maybe of a, of a, a group of friends getting together, uh, you're going to like it. If you look at what socialism actually is, though, at how it's defined in Merriam-Webster's dictionary, it's something like the abolition of private property. What socialism is as an actual political experiment is a system in which the coercive power of the state completely occupies society. In other words, a centralized government owns all private property. That means all individuals and families and churches depend for their sustenance on their daily lives on the decisions of government. That not only violates a fundamental human right, a, a right to be able to acquire property, it's also an economic disaster. Whenever socialism is actually tried, as opposed to simply thought about in a person's minds, it's led to poverty, to degradation, to the destruction of human rights. The best example of what socialism actually does in the real world is to look at what is happening in the South American country of Venezuela. Its politicians promised them plenty, it promised them equality. What it's actually delivered is misery.